Chief Reverend Venerable Dr. K. Sui Damananda, Organizing Chairman Mr. Ui Siok Tong, Mr. Lim Yok Ki, Chairman of KK Tzu Ying Buddhism Research Society, Leaders of Buddhist Temples and Societies in Sabah, Friends, Ladies and Gentlemen. On behalf of the Organizing Committee, I would like to extend a very warm welcome and good evening to all of you, especially to our distinguished speaker for this evening, the Venerable Dr. K. Sri Damananda, who is also affectionately known as Chief Reverend among the Buddhist fraternity. This year, as part of the nationwide celebration to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Chief Reverend's missionary service in Malaysia, we are indeed happy and fortunate to have this opportunity to jointly organize Chief Reverend's Dhamma Tutta Tour to Sabah. The Chief Reverend's Tour of Sabah is for five days from 12th to 16th August. Chief Reverend will be visiting Lahatatu tomorrow. The theme of Chief Reverend's Tour is Inner Peace and Well-Being. Tonight, Chief Reverend will speak to us on Power of the Mind. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Reverend is no stranger to Sabah. Chief Reverend has been to Sabah on several occasions over the last two decades. Permit me, Venerable Sir, to give a brief introduction of your good self. For those of you who are who were with us here on Monday night, please bear with me. Chief Reverend was ordained as a novice monk in Kirindi Vihara in Sri Lanka at the age of 12 and given the name Dhammananda, which means one who experiences happiness through the Dharma or Buddha's teachings. At the age 22, Chief Reverend received his higher ordination, Upasampada. Chief Reverend holds a diploma in linguistic philosophy, Pali, Sanskrit, and Sinhalese, and a master's degree in Indian philosophy from Benares University in India. In recognition of his scholarship and contribution to Buddhism, the following universities have offered honorary doctoral degrees to Chief Reverend. That I have been working here in this country to promote Buddhism for 50 years. But I have not converted even one person into Buddhism. <laughs> what a failure. <laughs> 50 years. But I think few hundred thousands might have accepted Buddhism in many parts of the world after reading our publications and after attending to various religious talks. But I did not convert anybody. <coughs> Tonight, our talk is Power of the Mind. First, we must understand what is mind and where it is. When Albert Einstein was asked this question, what is mind? He said, no matter. Then he asked, what is matter? Never mind. <laughs> Correct answer. Because in the matter there is no mind. In the mind there is no matter. Are <laughs> they how we answer? People had a belief for thousands of years that mind is in our heart, located in our heart. That is why still we use some word like kind-hearted, cruel-hearted, thinking that is in the heart. Later, medical science found out it is not located in the heart but in the brain. So when they maintain this belief that mind is in the brain, psychologists 
discovered mind is not located in the brain. Now where it is? There is no particular organ in our physical body for mind to live or to accommodate. This is the modern, not modern, latest discovery. Mind is an energy. Now this electricity is not located in any particular area. Electron exist, but by using various gadgets, we use that energy. The mind is exactly like electron. Now the trouble is, although we know that we have a mind, it is not necessary for us to know where it is. But we must know we, that we have a mind and how to make use of this mind. Then, religion, the main purpose of religion, any religion, is not only for worshipping and praying and performing rite and rituals and ceremonies. They are not the main purpose of religion. The main purpose of a religion is to train this mind not to commit evil, bad, wicked, immoral, cruel, dangerous, harmful thing, when such ideas appear in the mind, train this mind not to do this. This is the duty of religion. If religion cannot do that, there's no point of worshipping and praying and offering and... Again, when certain good thoughts appears in the mind. The mind must have courage to do something, to serve others, to maintain our human dignity, to develop our human values, give credit to our human intelligence by using that mind correctly. Our religion is important for that. The other day I have told you, only human beings have a religion. Other living beings have no religion. Why do they need a religion? Because they have an extraordinary intelligence. This intelligence you cannot find in other living beings. They too have a mind. Their minds are limited only to find out their food, their shelter, their protection and pleasure. It is difficult for them to use this mind further than that. That day I told you, we are called Manushya because we have thinking mind. Mana means mind. Thinking mind. By thinking, analyzing, use sense of reasoning, understanding, we will be able to do anything in this world which others cannot do. We can develop our human mind or intelligence to destroy the whole world at once. 
what they have discovered by using their mind today, they can destroy the whole world within half an hour. That is human mind. At the same time, religious teachers, enlightened religious teachers, have developed their mind up to such extent to guide the whole humanity, to bring them into correct path. That is human mind. Of course, many people believe uh, divine inspiration is there. Here we take only human mind without any extra energies or powers or any other influence. When the Buddha wanted to explain what this mind is, he said, Durangamang ekacharang asarirang guhasayang, the nature of the mind. He says, I have never seen another energetic, strong force or energy in this world other than the human mind. Human mind is the most strongest energetic force in this world. That which works so rapidly you know, lightening, appear and disappear, we have no time to see, lightening. But the mind can work thousands times faster than that. Uh, this is the nature of the human mind. I can give a simple example how quickly we can twist and turn the mind. Anyway, it is not very pleasant. Please forgive me. A young housewife was making love with a young boy in the kitchen. Her husband saw this. Then he asked, what are you doing? Then at once she said, do you know, every time when I keep durian here in this the, uh, bot bottle, I can see two, three pieces are missing. When I asked this boy whether he took, he said, no. Today I wanted to smell his mouth, whether he has taken the durian or not. One second. Within one second, she narrated this story. Uh, that is more than enough for you to understand the nature of your mind. You can twist and turn so rapidly, there's, there's no another energy that which can work so rapidly. Now uh, that's why Buddha says, there is no another energy that which can work so rapidly other than the human mind. Eka charan. <coughs> mind has no companion. Live, exist alone. Today there are six billions human beings in this world. You cannot find two human beings who think equally. Each and every person thinks individually. Husband and wife, 
who lived together for 50 to 75 years. Still, husband cannot understand the mentality of wife, wife cannot understand the mentality of husband. Uh, this is the nature of the human mind. Asari rang. There is no form, formation as an object, either tangible or visible object, to say this is mind. It is invisible and formless. Guha Sayang, uh, by catching this word, many people thought that it is in one of the organs of our body. Live in a cave, Guha Sayang. Mind exists in a cave. But when we analyze, we can understand that is the whole body is the cave, not the heart or the brain, but the whole body. Mental energy exists in our body, according to the Buddha also. Then, there was a lot of controversy regarding the origin of a mind. At what stage in the mother's womb the mind start in that baby? What stage? Different opinion. They could not come to any conclusion. Albert Einstein says, mind must come first. Exactly what the Buddha has said. He said, vijnanam matukuchismin okkamati. The departed person's consciousness, matukuchisming in the mother's womb, okkamati enter. Uh, that is the nucleus of life. Later, all the other cosmic energies, elements, combine together build up this life and this body. Started from the mind. Albert Einstein said, mind must come first. Of course, when we study the followers of various religions, they use another word, soul. But the Buddhist use the word consciousness, not the soul. What is consciousness? The word vijnana, in English we say consciousness, but we cannot catch the real meaning. In that consciousness, there are five kinds of mental energies. There are four mental faculties, Vedana, Sanya, Sankhara, Vijnana. The mind divided into four faculties. Vedana, feeling, present, unpleasant feeling we experience through one faculties of the mind. Sanya, conceive, perceive, recognize, identification, take place 
in the second faculty of the mind. Third one, sankhara. Very difficult to find out correct English word for that. We say mental concomitant, mental formation, but cannot catch the real word meaning what the Buddha wanted to tell us. Modern scientist, psychologist says, we think our knowledge about the human mind is very advanced, but when we compare our knowledge about the human mind with the psychology that existed 2,500 years ago, we feel we are still in infancy stage because there are many things still they could not understand the nature of the human mind. And this is one of them. Sankhar. We say mental formation. What is this mental formation? All our mental activities, wholesome, unwholesome, our habit, nature, character, behavior, attitude, way of life, all these things are energies. Uh, when all these things combine together, take as one mental faculty, Sankhara. After gaining enlightenment under the Bodhi tree, certain words came out from the Buddha's mouth, although there was nobody to listen. I said a few words. One line is, Visankhara gatang chittam. Chitta means mind. Now in my mind, there are no sankhara, no mental formation of accumulations of all those things. Just now I mentioned. Mind is free after gaining enlightenment. Now, with, we are the result of what we were. We will be the result of what we are. Even children also can understand this language. We are not referring to any religion. This is the nature of the mind. Here we are using our character, our behavior, our attitude, our way of life, our way of thinking, by using the same attitude that we maintain during the last existence. That is why by nature, by birth, each and every person has his or her own character. Assume in one family, there are five, six children. Same parent, same environment, same education, no differences. But when you study one person is very intelligent, another one is very stupid. One is criminal minded, another one is religious minded. One is very generous, the other one is very stingy. Then who has given this attitude, mental attitude? 
Do you think given by the God or given by the parents? No. That is their own. Uh, that is how we continue our attitude. We continue life after life. Wholesome, unwholesome attitude. A small children very easily learn bad things. No need to teach purposely. We do not send them to school to learn bad things. We do not send them to take private tuition for, to learn bad things. Naturally, they learn all the bad things. No need to teach. But to teach good things, you had to send them to school, we had to send them to private tuition, you had to beat them, scold them. Even then, they are very lazy, very difficult to gain that knowledge. Uh, that is why we are used to do more bad things than good things. That is why from our childhood, very easily we learn bad things. Very easily we learn. Good things, we had to use our full effort to learn, otherwise cannot. Now, religion is called Agam. This is an ancient word, even 2,000 years ago, in a Buddhist book, we used this word, Agam, religion. It's a very meaningful word. Here now, they pronounce it as Ugama, but the original word is Agam. A means purposely. Gamma means approach. Purposely we must approach. That is religion. Why? Religions never come to us. But all the other things, so many things come to us. We accept. But religions never come to us. There's nobody to bring religion by birth. Just because we were born in Buddhist family, Christian family, Hindu or Muslim families, then our parents and elders train us, teach us to follow them. Supposing we separate few children from different religious groups. No connection with any religion. We allow them to grow. They never talk anything about religion. Uh, that is why I told you they never bring religion by birth. Uh, that is why it is called Agam. Purposely we must approach, we must accept, we must believe. But many other things naturally come to us, then we accept. Then, our habit, nature, character, behavior, intelligence, stupidity, all these things are our nature. By nature, we maintain. Again, religion is important for us to train the mind not to continue those evil, bad attitudes, but to cultivate all the good attitudes and virtues. If religion cannot do this, there's no point of following any religion. We fight only for religious labels. They are not fighting for religion. Very unhealthy religious competition is going on. For what? To give a label. If we can remove this label, no Buddhism, no Christianity, no Hinduism, no Islam, only religion. No competition, no challenges, 
no jealousy, no discrimination, no hostility, because those labels are not there. They are fighting for these labels. Our religion, my religion, egoism. Our egoism worked through this religion. I want to increase the number of followers of our religion. Whatever rubbish we believe in the name of religion, but we want to bring them into our religion. Uh, this is the nature. Why religious unhealthy, religious competition is going on all over the world. If we can remove these labels, the Buddha was not a Buddhist. Do we know that? <laughs> Jesus was not a Christian. Do we know that? Uh, we have given these labels. We are the followers of the Buddha or Jesus. Therefore, we are Buddhists, they are Christians. But the founders of these religions did not introduce any label. What they wanted was to guide us, to tell us what is right, what is wrong, what to do and what not to do how to maintain peace, happiness, satisfaction in our life. Uh, these are the duties of a religion. Unfortunately, today, religion has become the main cause of violence and bloodshed and the war. Then what is the use of that religion? Because they drag religion into the battlefield and try to show, oh, we are fighting for this religion. Those who have planned to destroy World Trade Center in America, Nearly 4,000 innocent people had to face death, untimely death. All are innocent people. One and a half trillions dollars of property completely burned. Having done that, organizers say, well done. Very well done. God bless them. <laughs> that is why the day I told you, now heaven has no place, fully packed. <laughs> the more you destroy the followers of other religion, the more easily you can go to heaven. This is religion. What a pity. How our human mind our greed, our jealousy, our selfishness polluted the purity of religion. There is no religion in this world that which encourages for people to, to create this kind of cruelty for innocent people to suffer. So today we are using religion for that. This is the nature of the human mind. Religion is to train and tame and culture the human mind. But human mind polluted religion, misusing, abusing name of religion. The most unreliable persons, living beings in this world are the human beings. <clears throat> we can trust animals, other living beings, because we know their nature, their character, their way of life. 
but we cannot understand the nature of human being because of that human mind. To train <coughs> this human mind, different religious teachers have introduced, taught different methods. Many people started to worship and pray and do some recite, recite something. While doing this, they tried to guard their mind. Somebody asked whether the God has any time to sleep. Because he has created everything, whole world, must keep an eye on what they are doing. He has no time to sleep. But some people say yeah, there is. When people pray, I, at that time God get the chance to sleep. <laughs> Why? God knows at that time they don't do any bad thing, any harm to anybody. <laughs> they, God can trust them while they are praying. So in that sense it is useful. <laughs> but that is not enough. We pray and pray and pray, <laughs> go back and started violence and bloodshed and all wicked immoral things. Because the mind is not trained, mind is not cultured, mind is not developed, but we developed cunningness and selfishness. These are the most dangerous weapons in human mind, cunningness and selfishness. And these two things we cannot find in other living beings. They do not know what is cunningness. Small children, still mind not yet developed up to that extent to bring external things into the mind. Telephone is ringing. Then child goes, say hello. Can I speak to so and so? Mention the name. Then the child says, Daddy, telephone call. Then the daddy say, Tell I am not at home. <laughs> then this child say, Daddy says he is not at home. <laughs> because they are innocent, they have no cunningness. They do not know how to tell lies. Again, amongst all those living beings, they too have their own languages. Human beings are the only living be beings in this world who tell lies. <laughs> See how clever we are. <laughs> Others do not know how to tell lies. That is the development of the mind. To twist and turn is the development of the mind. But others had no chance to develop that mind to do, to behave like that. They follow the nature. We have violated the nature by using that intelligence. Then misuse this mind by adapting our inborn qualities, characters, behavior. All of us have six kind of characteristics. Raga charita, dosa charita, moha charita, buddhi charita, vitakka charita, saddha charita. 
six. Six kind of characteristic all of us have. No one is free from them. But noticeable, only one or two. All the others were submerged, not active, but remains in the mind. Raga Charita. Mind is dominating this attitude for sexual activities. Sexual urge is so advanced in their mind, they can forget everything, they can go against anybody. What they need is to gain some sort of sexual satisfaction. There are many. That is the correct. The other things are not so important today. Those are charita. Anger, hatred, very hot tempered. One word is enough for them to flare up their anger and to create very bad atmosphere by nature. It is not that purposely they create this. Their inborn quality, because of their habits. But some people, although they have ingredients in the mind, they can keep under control. Uh, that is why some are very hot-tempered, some have a lot of patience. Raga charita, doha charita. Moha charita. Very narrow mindedness. Understanding capacity is very low. By nature. We try to teach them, advise them, guide them, but they cannot catch, they cannot grasp by nature. They cannot change that. Buddhi charita, intelligence. From childhood, we can see many children are very intelligent. They can understand things very easily, but many others cannot. The, that is their own quality. By threatening, beating, forcing, they cannot change that. If they are weak, if they advance, not necessary to force, very easily they can grasp, use their sense of reasoning very easily. Raga charita, doha charita, moha charita, buddhi charita. Vitakka charita, confused mind. Many people cannot decide whether to do or not confusion in the mind. Cannot come to any conclusion to decide to do or not, oh, their nature is such. Since they cannot decide, they go and discuss with others to do or not to do. You know, there is a saying, when the husband cannot decide to do or not to do, go and ask the wife whether to do or not. If wife says, yes, can do, then don't do, then you will succeed. If wife says, yes, you can do, then don't do that. 
That is the way how they have treated women in those days. Napoleon Bonaparte, a great man, what he has said. He said, if you want to teach anything to women, please don't teach them anything to think, because they do not know how to think. <laughs> teach them something to believe, ah, then they will accept, just to believe. The bad reputation they have created for thousands of years about women. But the Buddha has mentioned in his teaching, Naso sabvesu thanesu puriso hoti pandito. Purisa means man. Itthi pi pandita hoti. Itthi means a stri, woman. We must understand, man is not the only wise person. Woman also wise, the Buddha is it. He was the first person, who, religious teacher, who wanted to break this traditional belief that women are lower than men. Remember, mind is neither male or female. Mind is free. A bhikkhuni, a Buddhist nun was meditating long ago. Somebody came and told her, you are a woman. Why do you want to waste your time for meditating? What do you can gain by meditating? Then this bhikkhuni or nun said, itthi bhavo king kaira chittam misu samayate. If the mind is ready, it makes no difference with the man or woman, because the mind is neither male nor female. Mind is mind. <laughs> Please remember this. Now, our topic is the, to show the power of mind. Just now I mentioned few items. What kind of disaster, destructions for, that we can do by using our human mind? Even devil or ghost or God also cannot do such destructive things. But human beings can. See how powerful human mind. Now let us think how to develop this mind. Uh, I told you religion is important for us. Let it be any religion. That religious label is not so important. To learn how to develop this mind, to avoid evil, to do good, to train the mind. This is the message of the Buddha. If anybody asks, actually, what is Buddhism? Only these three lines. Sabba papas akaranam, not to do bad thing. Kusalas upasampada, do good things. Sachitta pariyo dapanam, try to purify your own mind. Etang buddhan sasanam. This is the message of every Buddha who appears in this world. Ah, here you must try to purify your own mind. Why the Buddha says like this? Nobody else can purify the other person's mind. The Buddha cannot purify your mind or our mind. God cannot purify your mind, but you can do. Very clearly, Buddha says, Tumhe hi kichang atapang 
Mukhatharo Tathagata. You had to use your own mind to understand and to do this. But the Buddha cannot do for you. Nobody else can do for you. You had to do by using your mind. Now, you believe in God. You know you are very cruel. You know it is very bad. You go and pray and pray and pray, asking God to take out the cruelty from your mind. Do you think God can do that? If not, you come to the Buddha. Having heard Buddha also very powerful. <laughs> and worship and say, please take away my cruelty from my mind. Do you think Buddha can do that? Impossible. Another person cannot change the mind. Religious teachers can give guidance, advice, how to do that. But you have to do this. They cannot do that. Ah, that is why here the Buddha says, Sachitta Pariyodapanam. You must try to purify your own mind. Another person cannot purify. How to purify? Now you have been doing certain bad things. So one day you realize, I know these things are wrong, very bad. Then you determine not to repeat, not to do it again. Stop. Ah, then you purify your own mind. The God cannot stop this, the Buddha cannot stop this, but you can. Ah, this is the nature of the mind. Another person cannot handle our mind. Either the Buddha or God or any other supernatural living beings cannot do anything with our mind. But we can do if we use our mind properly. But the religious teachers give guidance, advice, how to do this. Now let us take the Buddha. how to purify, how to train, how to tame, how to develop the mind. Then, method is this. First, you must stop bringing external object into the mind through the senses. Every minute, every second, External object disturb the mind. Vision, the sound, the smell, the taste, the feeling. These five channels. Mind itself create mental objects. Six channels. Mind is mad now. No peace. Then create anger, jealousy, grudge and ill will, craving, attachment, all, all the, what you call, good and bad mental attitude we create because of these external objects. The Buddha says this very clearly. Pabhasara midang dikhave chittang Panchako agantukehi upakile sehi upakilita. I am giving this quotation for you to know, to show the authenticity. These are not my own interpretation. He says, naturally, at the initial stage, our mind is pure. Later, when the five senses started to develop, 
to bring external object into the mind, mental pollution start from that day onward. Uh, this is the nature of the mind. That is why we had to train our senses not to disturb the mind by bringing external object to stop. Train the mind not to create mental image, mental object. Now the mind is alone. No disturbances, no temptation, no irritation. But mind can stay alone without taking an object. Mind must fix towards an object. The Buddha has advised, we must give a neutral object. If it is very good, very pretty, very handsome, then again the mind is disturbed. If it is ugly, filthy, ah, disturb the mind. Therefore, object must be neutral. So what is the neutral object recommended by the Buddha? your own breath, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, count, one to ten, one to ten, one to ten, in the mind, no need to decide. Now mind cannot catch anything else into the mind, cannot bring anything else into the mind. Mind is relaxing, 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 relaxing. When the mind is relaxing, I told you the other day also, the organs of our body, brain cells, hormone, glands, nervous system, blood circulation, heartbeat, stomach, all these organ, organs are disturbed by the mind. When the mind is relaxing, these organs also function in normal way. Then we can lead a healthy life. We can avoid many sicknesses. Because the mind can create so many sicknesses. We do not know that. Later we come and say, oh, somebody might have done charm, or black magic, or devil, or ghost. Cannot understand, this is created by our own mind, not by anybody else. Now, mind is very tame, not stubborn, not wild, very tame because had the chance to relax. There is no religious label for that. This is not only for Buddhists. Anybody who got a mind can practice this without using any religious label. Now then, when we use our mental energy through the senses, because senses cannot work without mental energy. Eye consciousness, ear consciousness, consciousness is working there. But we use these as channels, bring. If we maintain this fear or worries or anger for a long period, create sicknesses, lot of sicknesses. Uh, then, when the mind is cultured, uh, take an object into the mind. He has prescribed four objects to concentrate. 
कायानुपस्थना वेदनानुपस्थना चित्तानुपस्थना धम्मानुपस्थना फोर ऑब्जेक्ट टेक बॉडी योर बॉडी और माय बॉडी कंसंट्रेट एनालाइज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड what this body is then we start from the very beginning this is the combinations of four mental faculties and four elements combination and uh, then the body come into existence again when we analyze part by part in our physical body separate all those things keep separately the man is missing flesh bones blood a skin hair teeth keep all separate one by one but the man is missing <laughs> the man is a concept created by our mind when all these things combine together in reality there is no man the combinations of all these things create this and uh, then to maintain this body why should i commit bad wicked cruel harmful thing Uh, develop the mind cultivate the mind uh, by concentrating on physical body then vedana anupasya vedana me feeling we have three kinds of feeling pleasant unpleasant and neutral neutral feeling we neglect pleasant and unpleasant feeling we take seriously take for instance when you go out you meet one of your best friend oh embrace and laugh and joke and express happiness then Furthermore, then later you met your number one enemy. <laughs> your face becomes sour and very embarrassing, and so much of anger, jealousy, grudge, and ill will completely pollute the purity of the mind. Ah, uh, feeling. Present, unpleasant feeling. in between you met so many people going here and there no feeling <laughs> you don't know to look at their face you don't to know who they are just let them go neutral but it is a feeling neutral feeling when pleasant or unpleasant feelings appear we had to concentrate this unpleasant feeling pain or suffering so unpleasant feeling is not permanent this is changeable impermanent we should not hate the unpleasant feeling we should not hate the pain or suffering when the pain is here focus the mind then create no oh, pain 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 then harmonize mind harmonize with the pain then the forget the pain that is meditation meditate on pain then we have forgotten the pain 
pleasant feeling. Then you have to think, this very pleasant and nice feeling that I am experiencing <laughs> won't last long. Maybe a few seconds, or few minutes, or few hours, or few days, or few months, it disappears. Why should I become slaves to this pleasant feeling, to misuse, to neglect all my duties, responsibilities, obligations, and spiritual development? Why should I neglect them just because this pleasant feeling? It is impermanent. Certain feeling, only few seconds, disappear. After that, we want to get it back. We run after that, cannot catch. We get into trouble. You have to concentrate on that, this pleasant feeling, that is emotional satisfaction, disappear. Any moment. So, if you did not surrender yourself to this pleasant feeling, when that disappears, you never worry. You can maintain your normal life. Uh, that is the way how to meditate or concentrate on pleasant feeling. All these things we are doing to train the mind. 